All right, today I'm going to show you how to actually take the data that you took from your second experiment for General Chemistry 2 for the freezing point depression lab and use Excel to come up with your freezing point of both your pure and your um, actual overall solution. So what you're going to do is you're going to take one column labeled time, you're going to plot all your time measurements and the temperature with those measurements. Now that you have that set up, you're going to actually highlight just the just these two, you're going to highlight it, drag it down. Notice I did not take the ones that actually have the words in them. I'm going to go up to insert and I'm going to create a scatter plot. Now you should get a scatter plot that looks like this. Notice that you don't have exactly from what you know from the lecture, you don't actually have it to where it plateaus out straight. This line continues going down. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to really break up our data. Now, if you were doing the experiment correctly, you should have noticed a point in your within the time that your solution became a little frosty. This is where it actually started to freeze. You're supposed to make a little note of that. If you didn't do so, you're going to have to eyeball it at this point. So, I, this is some made-up data. So, I'm going to look. I'm going to use this point about right here. Now, notice it says that um, 120 seconds. You can see that where I have the cursor over that point, and you have the x coordinate. Uh, that says 120. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these boxes and I'm going to drag it back up to 120. Notice that only takes me from time 0 to 120 seconds. From there I'm going to click on our graph, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to select data. From here I'm going to add another series and I'm going to select my x values. All right, My x values are going to be from, I'm going to select 120 again all the way down to the rest of my data. These are going to be my x values for my time and I'm going to select the y values accordingly. Notice now you have two different series on the same graph. What this does is this allows you to plot this allows you to plot two different best fit lines. You're going to use this to get your freezing point of these solutions. If you just try to eyeball it you're not going to be very accurate and your significant figures are going to be totally messed up. So from here, I'm going to right click on my first set of data, I'm going to add a trend line. I'm going to display this equation on the chart and set it aside. I'm going to do the same thing now to my second set of data. Add trend line, display the equation on the chart. These are your two equations that you can set equally to each other to solve for the freezing point. You're going to have to first solve for x, and then once you have x, set the two equations equal to each other I should say and solve for x. Once you have that then you're going to use one of your x back into one, either one of these equations to solve for y. This should give you the freezing point at this time. All right. If you really want to look, make it look good you can, right, you can click on your trend line, right click and format your trend line. From here all I need to do is you go here to forecast and I'm going to select to go forward and I'm going to select it to go um, 110 periods. Okay, this is arbitrary, but you see how it extended this line out 110 more seconds. I can do the same thing for the second trend line. Right click, format it. Now I'm going to forecast it backwards. Say, I'm going to select it 50 periods. How's that? That will make your graph look pretty if you choose to do so. All right. It doesn't really matter as long as you have the two equations. That's really what you need for this lab. Notice, and this is going to be true for the rest of the semester, if I plot my, if I switched my two columns, so if I plot temperature versus time and plotted those two, my lines would not give me the same slope. So please make sure throughout the rest of the semester you do be careful on which values are your x and which are your y. All right. If you notice that you're not getting a number that you probably should be getting, you may have your column switched up. Now notice what was essential in this in this demo was plotting two separate series within the same graph. The most common mistake I see students make year in and year out is they'll take all their data at once I'll plot all my data like so. And the most common mistake is they see that they need to plot a best fit line. 
So what happens if I don't separate it out into two series, I take my data, and I plot a best fit line? Does that look like it's anywhere close to actually being right data? What does this line tell me? This line is absolutely pointless. It tells me nothing about this graph at all. all right? You need to do it for the individual series. So like I said, it was pretty important for you to kind of eyeball where it was beginning to be frosty because this will tell you where you can end the first line and begin the second line. We set these two equations equal to each other. First solve for x, then plug it back in to solve for y. You should get the freezing point of that solution. You will do this for all six graphs you make in this lab and you will also need to show your work as well. So show it when you print this off, show your work below the graph, how you solve for x, how you solve for y. Make sure you have your equations printed on your chart and at the same time make sure you put labels. Label your axis, label your x-axis and your y-axis with units and give it a proper title. For your titles make sure that your title is descriptive of the graph you made. Don't just put run A or run A or part A run 1. That's not sufficient for a title. All right. I want time versus temperature of freezing point of T butanol, for instance. Make it descriptive of the graph you just made. Do this for all six graphs, print it out, and turn it in.